Welcome to our channel Biodesk. Today in this video, we shall discuss the features of different groups under subphylum vertebrata. Remember, subphylum vertebrata is the major group of phylum chordata. Chordates which include a notochord in their body. These are commonly called rod bearing animals. And vertebrates, the major group under chordata. Vertebrates include animals having backbone, skull. So vertebrata is further divided into five major groups. They are Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Apes and Mammalia. Thus we see five major groups under subphylum vertebrata. Pisces is the group of fishes. Amphibia includes frog-like creatures. Reptilia includes lizards, snakes. However, apes is the group of birds. And mammalia, this is the highest developed group including man himself. Today, we shall see the important features of these different groups in comparative way. Remember, these all differ in certain features. However, they are all vertebrates with backbone, with RBC, with skull. But certain features of these different groups are different. We can discuss the features of these different groups under certain points. First of all, you must remember the examples of these different groups. And then we can discuss their habitats, habits, their skin, locomotory structures, respiratory structures, heart, the part of circulatory system, reproduction, mode of fertilization and development. And lastly, must remember the special features found in particular group. Let us start from superclass Pisces. This is the group of fishes. Examples of this group are all different true fishes, which include seahorse, shark. In amphibia, we see frog, toad, salamander. Ichthyophis is also kept under amphibia. Reptilia includes lizard, snakes, turtle, tortoise, crocodiles. Class apes includes different birds. And remember, kiwi, penguin, these are also in this group. Mammalia includes rat, whale, dolphin, bat, man. So these are the different examples. You must remember them. And then we can compare their features. When we talk about habitats, means the place of living. All fishes are aquatic. Amphibians, semi-aquatic, means half aquatic, half terrestrial. They are aquatic as well as terrestrial. Reptiles are basically terrestrial. However, some members live in water also. Apes, mostly aerial. And in Mammalia, most of the members are terrestrial. About habits, the nature of the body. All fishes are cold-blooded, amphibians cold-blooded, reptiles cold-blooded means they have variable body temperature. The body temperature varies according to surrounding temperature in them. However, birds and mammals are warm-blooded having fixed body temperature. They differ in their skin also. Fishes have glandular skin, usually covered with scales. Glandular means different glands are present. In amphibians also, skin is glandular, but there is no outer covering, skin naked. In reptiles, glands are absent, skin is completely dry. And the skin is covered with scales or bony plates in case of reptiles. In birds, the skin is mostly dry, covered with feathers. And in mammals, skin is glandular covered with hairs. 
presence of hairs is one of the most characteristic feature of mammals. Talking about locomotory structures, fishes move with the help of different fins. In amphibia, fins are seen in certain larval forms and most of the members are with paired limbs. However, limbs are absent in some individuals also. In reptiles, the locomotory structures are paired limbs. These are absent in snakes. So except a snake, all other members are with paired limbs. In birds, presence of wings, one of the characteristic feature. And paired limbs, hind limbs suited for walking on land. Mammals have paired limbs. Now let us see the respiratory structures. Respiration in fishes takes place by gills. In amphibians, larval stages have gills, but in adults, they use skin and lungs for respiration. Reptiles are lung breathers. All birds are lung breathers, but in case of birds, lungs are with additional air sacs. Mammals also respire by lungs. When we see the heart in fishes, heart is two chambered, one auricle, one ventricle. In amphibians and reptiles, three chambered heart, having two auricles, one ventricle. Crocodile is the exception. But in case of birds and mammals, heart with four chambers, two auricles, two ventricles. Thus, heart in fishes, less developed, two chambers only. Amphibia, reptiles, three chambered and birds and mammals, fourth chamber. Reproduction. Fishes may be oviparous or ovoviviparous. Remember, seahorse or most of the fishes are oviparous, laying eggs, but sharks are ovoviviparous. Amphibians, reptiles and birds all are oviparous. Mammals are viviparous, giving birth. The fertilization. In fishes, fertilization may be external or internal. In sharks, internal fertilization. While in other fishes, fertilization is external, taking place in water. In amphibians also, fertilization is external. But in all other groups, reptiles, birds and mammals, fertilization is internal. When you talk about development, in fishes, development is direct, means no free living larval stage. In amphibians, development indirect, with free living larval stage. And in all other groups, reptiles, birds and mammals, development is direct. In case of mammals, we can say development is uterine, means taking place inside the uterus of the female. And now, the special features of these different groups. In fishes, body is streamlined to reduce the resistance of water during swimming. In them, neck is absent, lateral line system present. In amphibians, neck present or absent, but the digits are without nails, no nails in their fingers or toes. And in them, free swimming larval stage seen that is called tadpole larva. In reptiles, the special features include that limbs are short and almost equal. That's why they are creeping animals. They have clawed digits, means fingers and toes with pointed nails. Neck is present. In birds, beak present. Mouth is prolonged into beak. Bones are pneumatic, hollow and air filled to keep the body weight less. They have bipedal locomotion, moving with two legs and acute vision, distant vision very clear. In mammals, the special features include presence of mammary glands and external ear. Thus, keep in mind the different examples of these different groups and it will be easy to remember them in comparative way. Hope this session was useful. 
see you in the next one thank you